right. Cafeteria report. Yeah, I'm getting. I'm getting there. So again, like we had discussed in prior meetings tonight, we'll discuss a lot of the bidding going on tonight will be to use that surplus cash that we need to before the end of the year. So we can, we'll be discussing the usage of that money shortly. All right, does anybody got any questions on that? All right, we'll move into substitute pay. Go, Jen. <laughs> Give it to us. Um, so, <laughs> so we are requesting an extension of the temporary rates um, that we have requested this past school year so that we can continue to um, retain our current substitutes. Um, it worked very well. We were able to build up our substitute pool um, as well as continue to keep our building subs satisfied. Um, it kept us very competitive, so we got we um, attracted some really great people. Um, so we are asking. Um, we had currently approved a permanent change for substitute teachers to ninety-one dollars for the twenty-one twenty-two school year. We are asking to continue that back to one twenty that we did this year. Um, Ninety-six for a certified and a daily building sub. We are asking to do that to one thirty. Um, for the school year, and we will use the grant funding um, that we uh, obtained for the ESSER II fund. So. All right. That worked great. Anybody got any questions on that? All right, Indian Harbor Insurance Renewal. So in your packet, you will see a renewal form for Indian Harbor, um, yeah, it's, from a key risk management, everybody see that? So we got our renewal form and what this encompasses is our school board liability and our employment practices liability retention. The premium went up from 25, 4, 73. The current quote was, the one you see in front of you was 31,390. It's an increase of almost um, $6,000. The increase was due to our um, increase in quantity of claims and our increased Number of, in, number of employees. So going back to the insurance company for some competitive rates, they came back with us this afternoon. And if we increase our liability, instead of the $25,000 that we have now, if we increase that 25 upwards, the premiums drop a couple thousand dollars. So I think it's, um, I'm imploring the board for some recommendations in your opinion on how comfortable we are with the risk my recommendation is to leave it at $25,000. Um, if we were to increase that number up to like $50,000, we only save $2,000 from the 31 grand. Yeah, so worth it. I think the $6,000 in increase is well worth the risk that we are not absorbing. What, what kind of claims get sent to that insurance company? Um, like, do you have a recent claim? Yes. Yeah. yeah. What, what was it? What was the it. subject matter? Uh, hmm? Yeah. matter? CHRO matter? Yeah. Like what? <laughs> I can't. I can't, I can't say. say. Sure, you could. If his salesman was right here, right now, telling us what the insurance, he'd say, "Well, it's covered this and this and that." Are you asking me exactly for the, the case? No, I want to know what kinds of stuff get sent to this insurance company. Oh, Uh, What's CHRO? Education, um, claims. What's that? Yeah, you can't. I, I would be curious. Human rights and opportunities. This insurance company doesn't have human rights and opportunities. Right. So it's claims that when people make a claim against us, it's the insurance that protects the board. Is it things like age Self discrimination? Yes. Uh, yes. Sex, sex race. Disabilities. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. I get it. I got it. I have a question. Go ahead, Mayor. I why why can't this be covered under our self insurance? Why why do we have to have separate insurance for this? This is the health related. 
Yeah, it's not health related. I couldn't hear his answer. It's not, not health related. related. Oh, all right. So we can't self self insure for anything that's not health health related. No, you don't want to be self insured for anything like that. This is for when we get sued. Oh. So anything okay. that anything in excess of twenty five thousand dollars now, this insurance policy will kick in. So to maintain that, the price is the thirty one thousand dollars that was presented to us. If we want to increase that dollar amount from twenty five upwards, thirty five or fifty. The premium would go down from 31 to like 29 or 27. So it's a very small increment, but the additional coverage I think is beneficial for us because in the last year we have seen an increase in claims. All right. Various food service purchases. Okay, so for food service purchases at the prior meetings, we had discussed how Sodexo would be going out to. Um, price out some food trucks and some walk-in freezers, some television screens to put at schools to um, display menus. Um, they, dis they, they went through and they looked for pizza ovens for the high school. And um, I'm asking tonight to, for the board to waive the bid policy for them in relation to all of these. Um, in conversation with Sodexo, they are a nationally known company who vets all their vendors themselves before presenting the best opportunity for us. In working with our um, liaison, Alan, when it came to the food truck, he priced out three different vendors. He picked the best, uh, the best one for the truck, obtained the best price using their purchasing power as Sodexo. If we were to go out to bid, it would delay the process even further, may cost us a little bit more, mo more money based on availability and they did so for all of those items, such as the pizza ovens. They purchased from off the state bid list, but they're also using com companies who they've used before. So for us to go out and bid again, where we would be doing it again, it would also delay the process and may cause a hindrance on using this money before June 30th. Do we have to waive a policy to do that or not? I think we just have to approve the purchases knowing that Sodexo is vetting the process, not us in, internally. They have documentation of doing so. Like for the food truck, he provided me an email of three vendors that he vetted that for the food truck. Us? Is that what's online? Correct. Okay. I did look at that. So he is using their reputable vent vendors that Sodexo deals with as a national company, where if we went out to bid, we would be just getting locally. talking about the bids in number three right now, correct? The bids, no. This is just the food, no. okay. This is ju sorry. just food service. Okay. And this is what that 945 that we had in, we can only carry, like we had mentioned earlier in meetings, we only carry like two to three months worth of bills mm -hmm. in that account. So we need to use that excess money or the state takes it. So by June 30th, by approving all these items, it'll meet the requirements, we'll be in better shape. Our district will be in a lot better shape. These purchases will outfit our kitchens um, with HVAC and the food truck and proper items that will all, re all return on investment for our students. Okay. Any questions right. on that? That's good. Uh, budget transfers. So the budget transfers you see, the main one is for the Tuttle Playground at the, our last meeting we discussed um, approving the Tuttle play, Playground for $109,000. At the request of the board, they wanted to see the transfer made, where it was coming from. We had discussed it would come from unused paraprofessional salaries. So that um, transfer you see today is just doing that. All right. We'll move on to the building and grounds portion. On the there you have bids. So these are various bids. Again, we spoke of these in detail at the previous meeting. Um, the purpose of all these bids was items where if we had excess funding at the end of the year, we can strategically purchase these items where in another year we would not have the opportunity. The first being seen is the wall pads for 
multi-purpose multi -pur multi rooms at Overbrook, Mamogwin, and Tuttle. Um, during COVID times, the tables were in the wall at these schools. They were removed. Um, so now we have big holes in all, all of those gyms. So redoing these would bring these schools up to par with the rest of the district. Um, it is a safety concern not having, having those gaps with the metal behind it. Um, the, we only received one bidder, but that one bidder has done all the other buildings for most of the school pads and the blinds for the school. So we are comfortable with, with his work. Again, this would be paid for by the general fund only if the funding is available, but I would need approval to you know, have this av available if that s situation arises. Um, I'll just go through them all. We'll answer questions as at the end. Is that all right? Yeah, that's good. All right. So the next one we're seeing is for refrigeration up upgrade. Um, this part takes in relation to food service as well, but we did go out to bid for this because of timing and the magnitude of it. Um, this will provide new refrigeration from our rooftop units that service our cafeteria. We will take those units off and do ground units so they will not cause any damage. It'll make it easier to fix in the future if anything were to happen. Um, this is a large upgrade for the high school cafeteria. This will be paid for through the school launch funding. Next is interlocking wrestling mats. Over the years, our wrestling mats um, did not interlock. We would place them next to each other. We would place duct tape over them. And over time, you know, they start to wear and tear and they start to fall apart. And um, Anthony has requested that these are um, interlocking so we don't have to do that. They actually fall right into place with each other. It's safer for our athletes. They're longer lasting and the coating on them will last longer, not with doing the, the moving and the taping of such. Um, this one sport, I'm sorry, Dalamore Sport Surfaces is the only um, local vendor that we have dealt with in the past that does this so we are comfortable with their product being the only um, provider to give us a bid we are comfortable with with that. Wait, so there weren't three bids or you didn't get one? We, we put them out to bid, we only received okay, one I'm and the sorry, reason being right. is only one company offer, the one we deal with is one of the few that offer these interlocking products. Okay, thank you. The next one is the elevated bleachers for the new Krasafi field at the high school. Um, when we had the storm, our visitor bleachers were blown away. Everything else was replaced except those, ble those ble bleachers. We are hosting the Thanksgiving game up this upcoming year. So I feel having seating for, our, seating for that game and going forward is paramount. Um, it's not a good look if we don't have bleachers for people to come to a game. So um, with that being said, we did receive three, three bids. They are reputable com companies. I did some background checks with neighboring towns. They have all either had work done or know of these com companies, the cheapest being the 36124. This is for um, 66 feet long, ele elevated, basically fits the footprint of what was there. It includes installation, delivery, and the fence in front. To, so it'll, it'll complete the project. Um, on a side note, for this project, I am um, discussing with the town right now as we still have some cat project money left for the insurance money for the field. It will, it's not named for bleachers currently, so the ask is to change the name on that cat project account to make it multi-purpose so we can potentially use that money for these bleachers and not have any effect on us at all. Those conversations started today, so hopefully we can clear that up soon. Lastly, oh, not lastly, the next one is for the Library Media Center project. We discussed this as a way for us to move forward with our uh, CTE project in the, in the basement of our school. It will be putting glass wall part partitions on both sides of the library where we are now. Um, we went out to bid and two bidders came in. So there was two, um, the base bid included framing for the glass walls, it included windows and doors for that glass wall and the alternate one that you see is we'd like to outfit one of the sides with office space, so including sheetrock and in, in insulation, lighting, doors, and the whole nine yards for building office space. So there were, um, we had them price it in two different pieces. Um, in comparison, Kelly Property Manager, which is an East Haven company, came in for windows, doors, and framing at the 146.710, while JL Simpson out of Bridgeport came in for 115,000. And the alternate for the office build out was 28 
450 for Kelly compared to John Simpson at 37. Um, they're both reputable com companies. John Simpson has done large projects along the shoreline in some schools. So it's my recommendation that we actually split this job up whenever we move forward with the money, giving um, the glass piece to John Simpson and Kelly property can do the office build, build out. So um, both companies will get the work, but for us, it's more cost efficient. There was a contingency in here as well that wall work had to be done by August 1st. Um, at least the shell had to be here for, for less disruption when school starts. Um, there was mention of being a back order on the glass, but as long as the framing and the sheetrock and the, knee, and the knee, knee walls are in before school starts, we can schedule a weekend or a holiday for them to come in and complete the glass. Um, just wanted to make sure there's no disruption to students once, once school starts. Now it's our last one. Our last bid here is for the athletic fence, which will take us from um, the track to the baseball, the baseball dugout. Between the, two, between the two dugouts in the middle, we will put a locked gate and then an, another fence from the softball dugout to the perimeter of our property. Um, this is both a safety concern for us where many people are on the field with bikes and quads and dirt bikes and they're destroying our fields and they're ruining the sprinkler heads and by the time security gets to them or the cops get to them they're long gone so we can't really enforce it um, put nicely we have a lot of people who bring dogs on, on, on the field and leave us nice surprises and they don't clean their surprises up after they leave so this is a way for us to um, lock our fields maintain the quality of, of our fields and um, there's three options that you see here the bid amount is for the base fence which like I just said is from track to dugout. The fence in the middle is the entrance gate that I spoke of. And we also, in speaking with our athletic department and our softball and baseball coaches, they would like to have a bullpen to remain competitive with other fields in the area where their pitchers can warm up. So that option is $9,400, which was the lowest bidder. Um, so in, in total, total fence is the lowest bid for the complete package at 38.7. They would be my recommendation. They are a reputable company that the town uses pretty frequently, so I'm comfortable with their work. Um, these are the only two that, that we had received, so pending available money, that would be my recommendation to go forward. That's it for bids I have. Right. Got it all in before seven. Any questions? The only thing I want to make a comment is yep. when you bring those uh, HVAC units down to the ground, yep. you have to fortify them against theft. I don't think they're, I think the intention is, when I say ground level, I think it's going to, they're going to be elevated enough where they're, where they're suspended, but easier enough to get at to work yeah. rather Just than going careful. up on the roof. People can't get at them with a pickup okay. truck. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But we, we, we could add some. No, I'm just saying, yeah. keep that in mind because uh, people steal those things like crazy. And to piggyback off of that, at the time that food service project is completed, we will also be fixing the roof that's been causing us a problem for many years in our science wing because it's been leaking because that air handler has pierced the rubber membrane to allow water in and trickle down to the science classroom. So when that's, we have to get, a, this price includes to get a crane in here to lift that off. Once that's done, our roof company will come out, fix that problem, and that'll help us going forward in the science wing. All right. If nobody has any questions, we'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion. All right, we're all set. Evening's meeting. Um, let's begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Melissa, if you could do roll call attendance, please. Tia Palma. Here. Oh. Marianne Pellegrino. Here. Jennifer DeLongo. Here. Jack Stacy. Here. Tom Murtaugh. Here. Lisa Jerusalem. Okay. <laughs> Tom Hennessy. Here. 
Here. All right, thank you. So for my report this evening, I was just gonna go over some of the new bills that were passed, but we're gonna take a little bit more time to look through them because now there's revisions from the special session. Um, however, I did want to thank those that were able to come to graduation uh, last night. It was it was a good night. It was really nice to be back to um, doing things close to normal, very close, right? A little better than last year. We'll put put it that way. Getting there. Uh, let's see. It was wonderful. So with the with the bills that did go through, you there are some through the state or through key? the state okay. through the state. Um, that the good news is we are ahead of the game. We are pretty much already implementing things that are required to be put in place within the next two years um, in regards of curriculum, in regards to SEL assessing, um, certain courses that we're offering. So we are in a good place there. One thing that there's a couple of big changes, uh, there's an extra two excuse absence days for the district which i think brings it up to a total of 20 from 18 and that's for mental health days um, also the age for being able to withdraw from school has changed you can no longer withdraw at 17 you have to be 18. Um, a parent can sign for a 17 year old but they simultaneously they must enroll in an adult ed program so those are like two of the big changes and then there's a few different um, policy implications that we're going to have to be looking at but CAVE is going to send us up all the policies that need to be updated so for instance there's a, quite a few things going on with birth to three which I'm sure Bob's aware of right um, again we already do probably most of the stuff that they're recommending in here um, so that's actually a really good thing We've already addressed that stuff, Michelle. What was that? We've already addressed the birth of three Yeah, times. that's what I'm saying. Some of the things that they're talking about, it was surprising to see it as being passed, because I'm like, well, I think we have already do that, but apparently not everybody is in the same place as us. So I'm trying to think of anything else that was, that really stood out. No, I think Jen's gonna actually give us some more information tonight on the SEL. Um, other than that, we're gonna take some time to go through these. Like I said, there's were some revisions already within a week. So um, that is all I have for this evening. We'll move on to correspondence. Um, Erica is not here tonight, so Jack? Yeah, I just wanted to make note that we received a uh, personalized note um, regarding our recognition and support of the adult education program and that was from the adult education director Joe Ferriola. Thank you and as you know all electronic correspondence is available on the drive. <clears throat> we then have subcommittee reports. Jack? Yeah, so in, in athletics, we had a great um, spring sports season, as many of you know, and the girls softball team made it to the semifinals. Um, Mr. Verderam would like you to know that there are a couple of, of our students being considered for all state or under all state consideration. Those names have not yet been made available. And Tori Ify, um has been named as a all area girls softball team by the New Haven Register. Thank you. Okay, personnel? Um, yes, we just had a subcommittee meeting where um, we had, a, um, we'll be talking about some of the items later on. Um, negotiations are still in play for um, custodians, uh, security, and a missing one. Maintenance. Maintenance, thank you. And, um, we are going to, in July, open up negotiations for administration. Okay. And um, for policy, I will get a chance to talk with Erica. There's quite a few policies that we just have to go over and revise again, but Cable will be providing most of that information just to make sure we're in compliance. 
finance. Tommy, anything extra you'd like to? No report to see. Okay. Thank you. Is that all of them, right? I think we got everybody. Am I missing anyone's subcommittee? Okay. All right, just checking. All right, that brings us to the superintendent. It felt really good to be in the presence of students and their families and opening our doors again to our families. And I think it closed out the year setting the tone and the stage for uh, next year, it's bringing back a little bit uh, more normalcy. Um, and tonight, I'm going to invite um, Julie Church up. We'd like to present to you the end of the year parent feedback survey data. Um, as you know, we've given this uh, survey out to parents uh, quarterly throughout the year, the beginning of the year, the middle of the year, and the, and the end of the year. Um, and we have the results from that parent survey. Um, and then after that, we want to share with you some of the feedback we received from families regarding the return to in-person um, learning and continuity of educational services plan that will be posted on the district website tomorrow in English and Spanish. And um, I will share a little bit about that plan with the board at the conclusion of this presentation. So, um, Julie, I'm going to come join you if you don't mind. beginning of the year, middle of the year, and uh, end of the year result. But it also informed the work for that SR3 grant. So you'll see that some of the questions were, will be used and were shared with the reporting services for that. So the end of the year family feedback survey, they were distributed out in English and Spanish and we learned as we progress through this year. So our first survey went out as, as an English version and a Spanish version. But when that happens, you can't compare the data. Um, so we adjusted along the way, and now our questions are English and Spanish together so that when a family answers, they get to answer in the language of their preference, and then we just translate it as we go. They were asked to complete one survey per child, this time it was open, oops, wrong date. <laughs> Sorry there, I don't know where that was. But it was open for a week and it closed on the 21st, the last day of school. There were 25 questions and it was designed to take less than 10 minutes. They were anonymous this time for the first time. There was a lot of feedback from families. They, they um, expressed the desire to have a, an anonymous survey rather than where their information was shared. So we made all those adjustments. <clears throat> the survey responds to key shared beliefs. And those beliefs, uh, they're, are they, oh, they're not up in here, they're up in our boardroom. Um, in East Haven, we believe in the East Haven community, in building trusting positive relationships, we know all of our core beliefs, but the, the survey um, addresses safe and positive learning environments because it really gave families the opportunity to give feedback on their perception of our safety measures. So the first thing I wanted to share is that <clears throat> it was a bit disappointing for me to have 420 responses. Our earlier survey, the English alone had over 800. And I, I asked myself, you know, why is this happening? We've, we've found this with participation in Zoom meetings, um, that we've kind of, participation has fallen off. 
and when we're trying to really engage people. But it's across the state. I can say that in my family and community engagement um, district facilitators meetings, we talk about this, that families are just saturated right now with Zoom. They wanted things in person. And now that we can actually have things in person, it's sports season and, and people aren't actually getting out. So it's, it's tough, but we're gonna start the new year with a positive outlook and engage more families. Another thing about end of the year survey results that we've done in the past is we've taken iPads out to field day, out to um, events at the schools and had um, families fill them out then. And that was something else we couldn't do this year. So pretty good results there um, from uh, the middle school had uh, the largest piece of the pie in completing the survey. So interesting, how is your child attended school at the end of the year? Pretty close to where we were at the beginning. The beginning of the year, the survey results had 75% in person. And at the end of the year, we're at 76.9, so sl slightly higher. And we know we had fluctuation throughout the year for that. At one point, we had more than 30% remote and maybe even in one building higher, um, a higher percentage than that. We really wanted to know how happy families were with the learning model that they had for the majority of the year. And families, 79.3% of families were extremely satisfied or satisfied with the, the learning model for their child. I can tell you that at the end on the last slide, you'll have the opportunity to actually see the written responses that people typed in. One of the greatest response rates in this survey, as it was in the middle and the beginning of the year, is thanking the district for having in-person learning. They were so grateful. So some of the good stuff. Some things that families feel worked well that they would like to see us com you know, continue. They feel that this year in particular there was better communication with families. That also came out in the focus groups. They, <laughs> it's funny, everything in here came out in the focus groups. Options for remote um, on school days, is some, on snow days, sorry. Um, they liked the, the snow day option. A few families actually added for sick days. In-person opp opportunities and the opportunity for students to socialize um, in the survey and in the focus group. Families are looking for things that aren't academic based where their children could interact with each other, perhaps more after school groups and um, sports. Work assigned and posted in Google Classroom. Families were appreciative of the fact that they knew what to expect and they can go into the Google Classroom and see when assignments were due and what they needed to do to support their child. Continue to offer online support after school. Uh, they love the outdoor stuff. Anything we can do outdoors, spending more time out, outdoors learning. The um, use of success maker and remedial programs. The SEL integration and collaboration with support staff and virtual meetings for conferences, PPTs, etc. And that came up in almost every um, parent focus group or family focus group. It also came up from the students that the students had said that they heard their parents talking because I had student groups without adults and that they heard their um, families talking and one young man I remember at Tuttle School specifically said that his mom used to not be able to make his conferences but she was able to do it because she could do it on her lunch break. So it was pretty um, powerful especially when it comes from kids. Now, on the flip side of this, I think everything that you see here positive, there was probably one or two of the exact opposite. So if we did hear that my child needs more time in person and more time to socialize, 
we heard the flip side of that. Like, my child should be home, doesn't need socialization. If I said to continue, continue online support after school, you know, some families didn't find that beneficial. But these are the ones that rose to the surface that came up time and time again. So for challenging, uh, mask wearing was a challenge and continues to be a challenge. Not being able to switch classes, students and, and families expressed that as a challenge. Unable to socialize with peers, lack of hands-on learning activities, and not that they they weren't being provided, it's just that they couldn't happen because specifically students talked about science and wanting to do the experiment and having everybody do it rather than watching it happen on a tape. Um, virtual Flex Fridays were challenging for some working families. More opportunities for students who were working above grade level teachers splitting time between remote and in-person learners, the lack of traditional music, band, chorus, art, and physical education. Every fifth grader had a focus group. Every fifth grade school um, had a focus group. Every fifth grade school shared the fact that they wanted more PE. <laughs> <laughs> and art and science, like they wanted those activities. I'm going to just digress one second and tell because I think this is so important and I wish um, that the student was able to come and hopefully they will be able to come speak to you in the near future. A fifth grade student in a school shared that he was willing to cut his lunch short but, and look for more time in his day. So he said if we, if we have a shorter lunch and we go out to recess for a shorter amount of time, we can get another 15 minutes for science. So that was coming from a student. I was like, wow, they want more time. So talking about time, I'm going to give you an example from a high school student who said <clears throat> that he felt, and this is a fully remote student who has not been stepped in this school one day this year. He's an 11th grader. He um, doesn't socialize much with, with students outside of here. He plays video online, and he chats with someone in you know, Florida, someone who's about his age. And he said what he hopes happens is when he comes back to school that there's like an advisory period. And I actually have a clip of his, his voice because I, I think it's just so powerful that there's an advisory period where we can address like our individual needs during this time beca because um, I haven't been able to interact with any of my friends in over a year. And just to hear like that come from a student, it's, it, it hurts, a little, you know, it hurts to realize that some students have not seen peers in over a year. So their information was wonderful. Um, so we had some, we need improvement with technical issues and Chromebooks and connectivity and that was an ongoing problem across the state. And they wanted extended day activities needed for socialization, not only academics. So we asked them about COVID-related safety measures and to see how they feel. 5.2% um, said we didn't have enough safety measures in place. 11% felt we had too much, too many safety measure, measures. And then there was the just right about 72%. And the green is? Oh, the green is my, that, um, they're at home. They so it, yes. School, so the safety measures didn't apply. Mm -hmm. Yep. So some of the concerns expressed comparing them from the beginning of the year till now. One of the questions asks, how concerned are you about your child? And then it asks about academic growth, social, emotional well-being, physical health, and peer relationships. And at the beginning of the year, you can see that the number, the percentage was a little higher. Families were a little more concerned at the beginning of the year than the end of the year. But remember, we're looking at a different um, sample size. So it might you know, impact that a little. Social emotional well-being, um, again, is a lower percentage. Physical health, 
very close and peer relationships is, is definitely lower. Looking at how we communicate with our families and in particular one school in, in district, um, I had looked at, and you can see the breakdown of these things, and I'll, I'll share the back end of the survey with the board. But um, one school had no negative comments at all about their communication. It was nice to see. And then others, very few. So how helpful has the communication from your child's school been? At the beginning of the year, overall across the district, it was right around 70, well, 71 and a half percent. And at the end of the year, it's almost at 78 percent. And those are the types of, um, increases that we're really looking to see. How clear has communication from the school been about COVID-related safety measures and protocols? And again, that one went up from 76.6 to 85.3. Hmm. Um, it's really important to recognize a family's perception on how comfortable they feel too as well. Um, we, we try to engage families, we try to have communication that's meeting them where they, where they are, providing the language that they um, would like to receive their communication in. And all those matter to see how comfortable you are with the communication we're providing. So this was nice to see that the majority of the respondents were extremely comfortable with our communication at, or comfortable, somewhat comfortable, but not comfortable at all. It was a very small, small amount. What's that? Two, three fifty, three fifty out of the four twenty. Mm -hmm. Comfortable or extremely comfortable, roughly. And I, I do appreciate the an anonymous survey, but for me, the reason why I didn't want these surveys anonymous is because I would like to know who this is because I want to address that. I want to fix it. If you think it's an issue and we're not making you feel comfortable, if I don't know who your family is, we can't reach out to you. So, Are you able to um, use the data to see maybe if it was a higher percentage in certain schools? Yes, so I could break down the data by school, by subgroup, by um, um, students receiving special ed services, by English language learners. It actually asked some information and families had the option not to answer, but it, families answered and of the families that answered, they speak 18 different languages. Like, so that's all, and that's just out of this 400, 420. Yeah, so they did answer that at the end to help us look at In that. In the fall, when we did collect contact information, Julie was able to follow up with some of those families and connect them with support services, provide some training. Yeah, hi -fi, um, well, yeah. hotspots, Wi-Fi. Hotspots, Wi-Fi, and address some of the concerns that they listed, which was really nice to be those connections and utilize the resources that are at our fingertips in the district to be able to connect the mm -hmm. families and or just drive to their house and provide the resource for them. Mm -hmm. So on the last, um, and this will be up on the teaching and learning um, page as well, but on the last slide there, if you click here, any slide that was in the results that wasn't utilized here, not to hide information, just wasn't relevant enough to discuss is, is here. Um, and the bottom has all the open-ended responses. And I just wanna read through them one more time because I tried to take out any um, personally identifiable information and I just wanna make sure I didn't miss anything before it goes public. Any questions on this? So this is the end of the year um, parent feedback survey relative mm -hmm. to 2021 school year. 420. 420 responses, yeah. And we probably at the beginning of the year had just under a thousand mm. responses. Um, so I think people might be surveyed out. There's a lot of surveys going mm -hmm. out there. We also had to do these parent forums for the real, the uh, back to in-person learning plan and send out a, a survey for that as well. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going to show you that. There's quick a too. lot of Surveys out there. I was going to ask that. So we usually only do one climate survey a year, correct? We do one climate survey, but we'll send out some. That's what I'm wondering. Next year, what are what frequency? I mean, are we going to do it? You have to do very similar to this, just because as we're getting back, 
yeah. to normal? So as part of the back to in-person plan, we have to update our plan every six months mm -hmm. through June of 2023, is it? Mm -hmm. Or 22? I think it's and, 22. Um, in, in an effort to revise that plan, we're going to be sending out surveys to seek input. Um, so seeking input that way, either virtually or through comment on the plan, so that as the school year progresses, should health metrics change or uh, dynamics of the school setting change, we're continually eliciting feedback from families so we can make some adjustments and also stay in alignment with state requirements. So very briefly, because next week, um, next meeting, you should have a full report on this. This is the presentation that was shared with families and students in the focus groups. So focus groups consisted of elementary schools, five, um, fifth grade, at least um, four to six or four to yeah four to six students in select fifth grade classrooms. In one building, we only used one classroom, not to cross um, cohorts. Middle school and online had an opportunity to join separately via um, Zoom link because, again, of cross cohorts. In person met on Zoom in English, Zoom in Spanish, in person, English, Spanish, and then a second round of Zoom, um, one session all in Spanish, but that time we didn't have anyone show up for that meeting, and then um, one final one in English. And I just wanted to say anyone who reached out to me, I did have a phone interview with to make sure their, their information was um, captured. So this is the focus groups to elicit the input on the back to in-person learning plan that will be posted on the website tomorrow. Yep. And we talked about this earlier today in, in um, Curriculum Council, but that plan has five buckets of priorities and social emotional learning, learning acceleration and renewal, um, technology, family and community engagement, and safe and healthy schools. So just to give the families a little background on what this um, money was going towards. And the questions are basically, I'm not gonna have read through them, but it's basically, as a result of the pandemic, what is your child missing academically? And what do you feel we should do to address that? And then, there were some good things about our reaction to the situation. And with that, I would think of having access to families to attend a 504 or a PPT or any other type of meeting, virtually rather than always in person. And or what are the other things that worked that were successful for your family that you want to see us continue? And the social emotional well-being of staff and students and what can we do to address that. Any observations families may have seen or experienced with particular subgroups of students or any um, group that might have experienced more negative effects than, the, than others. And how can we address that? What are your suggestions? How do you felt like it, it, remember I asked teachers as well, sorry, another subgroup, another um, focus group um, we had for staff. So how did it affect ad administrators and teachers? And then anything else they wanted to share. So those were the questions they were presented with. I shared some of the, the notes from students and, and things that have happened. Um, families <clears throat> brought up things from, you know, healthy, options for lunch, more time outside, um, buy more manipulatives, staff, um, lots of the same theme over and over again. Definitely the parent involvement and having access via Zoom to things is, is a big thing they would like you to consider. Students, and it's funny because I come to the board meetings and I heard about the traveling salad bar. So I don't say anything in these meetings, but I'm at Mamagwan School and those fifth grade students asked if they can have a salad bar. <laughs> they're like, if they're gonna spend funds, can we have salad bar and we should be able to always buy water because we don't, we don't like milk. So they, they have these ideas and um, 
a student at Ferrara said it best, a young lady, and she said, um, please share all of my ideas, but then can you please make sure you come back next year when I'm in the middle school because we have really important things to say. And I said, I agree. And, and so um, I said, if, you know, when you get to the middle school, consider you know, joining the student council. She's like, well, maybe I'll do that, but you should just come back and talk to us. <laughs> so students have lots of things. And it's, it will all be documented in the report. And perhaps um, you know, our audience of citizens I know had joined too um, one of the meetings. So maybe you know, we'll hear more about it as we, as we go on. Does anyone have any questions? I had the opportunity to sit in both some of the virtual meetings and the in-person meetings. Unfortunately, in the in-person meeting that I sat in, only one parent yeah. came. Happened to be a parent who also came to the virtual meeting. But the same types of um, things are surfacing, right? Parents are, and, and students, they don't like masks. They're super concerned with the masks. So, you know, while we don't have um, full autonomy to make decisions about that. Um, we're hoping that the vaccination rates go up so that the state relaxes the mask requirements for next year. Um, they definitely like having, parents love having the opportunity to attend PPTs and 504s and join school assemblies virtually and watch, watch those things if they're not able to be there or participate electronically. It's convenient and they don't have to take time from work, they can just step out of their office. That was a huge, huge thing. Mm -hmm. um, definitely, you know, supports academically, but we also heard a lot of supports emotionally and about kids who might be experiencing anxieties or fear about returning to school because they've been remote learners. So, you know, I think we're going to have to really look at that very carefully and as the first weeks of school come upon us, make sure that we're engaging in really supportive relationship developing activities and engaging kids in very comfortable ways to transition them in and get them socializing with their, with their peers and supporting the staff and ensuring they have the resources, the structures, um, and access to any materials to be able to do that effectively. I like the, the idea that the, the children seem to have a voice here mm -hmm. and they fully um, expect it of you again for next year, which is really nice because mm -hmm. they obviously feel comfortable doing it. Yes. So you really did give them a chance for it to be heard. And, and, and it's, I, I don't have the paper in front of me because it's out, the notes are out to, to be put into a report, but what I remember are, are what the student says. So just as I'm listening to the superintendent speak right now, a, t a Tuttle School student, like I remember exactly where I was when these students said these things to me. He, um, and was, I think it was the first one I had with students, and I hope he hears this meeting and, and, and realizes I recognized what he said. He had um, shared that he un they, students understand social emotional learning. They understand what it's about. And so he, he said, we do need social emotional learning. But I don't need a lesson on peer pressure right now. I need a lesson on how to talk to my friends. And like every time I heard a kid say something, it, it just, it made me feel good knowing the importance of social emotional learning, knowing that I, I shared in a curriculum council be earlier that I have the Secretary of Education, a little clip speaking about social emotional learning. And, and sharing that information so that they know that students understand that we recognize that they're challenged by these things. They haven't had interactions in so long and they need help um, in, in reaching out to friends and what to say and re-engaging them. This is something they've never experienced before. So. That's very really true. Yeah. Julie, can you pull up the So using all this information and a statewide template, we put together um, our back to in-person learning and continuity of educational services plan. The state provided all districts with a template. We decided to just go ahead and use the template. It looks like this. There's a little introduction and then the introduction is followed by the five areas that the state required our 
um, back to in-person plan focus on. And oh, those... No. Oh, I don't, that's a that's Spanish, which is being, yeah, sorry. Ah, wrong one. Oh, she's working. There's my translation it's right now. <laughs> Here it is, sorry. So after the introduction, if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see the five areas that the plan requires us to work on. And obviously, for you know, obvious reasons, there's health and safety strategies, continuity of services strategies, public comment, which was the public forums that we held, but we also embedded a link into this document that parents can click on and put some comments in relative to the plan. Mm -hmm. And then periodic review process. So again, those are those every six months going back to this plan, looking at any comments that parents have provided through the embedded link in this document, as well as any forums we hold. Mm -hmm. And then finally, um, what was the last one it was about? Oh. Oh, understandable and uniform <coughs> format, which means putting in a format that is accessible by individuals with disabilities or language preferences. Yeah. Yep. So that, that's our plan. It's, it's not, you know, 49 pages like our reopening plan. We do provide a link to our reopening plan, but this is really what, what the state was requiring. We kept it very laser-like, focused, to the point, short, and some things in here are really highly dependent on the state and the guidelines they put out, like masks, mm -hmm. testing requirements, and things of that nature. So Good. tomorrow this will be posted the on the district website, and we will make sure that the state is notified that it's posted per their um, criteria. And you're already putting that out tomorrow instead. So That's tomorrow. Yep. You have plenty of and all the feedback along the way, just because the report isn't ready, we've met as this plan was being developed. And some of the things that were brought up in those focus group sessions are things you're already acting on. Um, looking for more time for targeted instruction. Things um, that, we've, that have already been discussed in building this and things that have actually been discussed at the board meetings to address um, the transition back for all learners next year. And this Good. all is part of not only, you know, our operations, which is keeping our facilities healthy and safe for kids to engage in in-person learning, but also enhancing our community engagement and building a culture and climate um, around mm -hmm. high expectations. What was that? How many families participated in this? This hasn't been posted yet. No, no. How many, how many families participated in the Zoom and the Oh, in the focus so groups? So scroll, down, scroll down to the number of focus groups that you held, Julie. Probably. When you, when you state it, it, looks, it, it appears one way. But look at the list of focus groups and um, that box Yeah, right so there. the family was virtual twice, in person once. The only time I didn't have anyone in, in attendance was the in-person, in um, no, the virtual Spanish. And that session was actually simu at the same time that I was holding an in-person virtual we that actually well. think we you joined. For a half hour right. To see if anybody came in. Mm -hmm. That was the only one that did not have attendance. I do have the attendance sheets back. Um, five, six individuals. Um, the smallest one had two. Uh, five or six families at each of those meetings, so make close to 20, I would say, family members, and individual calls, individual calls and, staff and, and then the, student the staff one, the students, the, the largest amount, I would say, was the fifth graders, because I had, you know, about five at every school, um, high school students. That was a, a rough time for them, but I did have four, and then two additional filled out the form that was shared to families. I actually have to add that. So to provide every family access, even if you couldn't make an, a meeting, a form was sent out with the exact same focus group questions in English and in Spanish. And again, just 
This plan is narrow. It only contains those five areas. So we tried to incorporate as much as we could in this plan, but that doesn't mean that everything else gets ignored, right? We look at that information, and if there's something that's really pertinent or important, we can integrate that into just our everyday natural activity that we go that we go about on a daily basis. Um, just because it doesn't fit in the plan doesn't mean we can't um, look at it and actually um, do it yeah, and act yeah. on it. Sure. So. Sometimes it's very hard for people to be able to stop, come and reflect, and then go, you know, lives are busy, even in COVID, right? During COVID. Yeah. So, but I mean, I know it's disheartening sometimes people, oh, so few, but it, it's understandable given, you know, everybody was at their own place. And given social emotional situations too, it, it, it was hard. Mm -hmm. Keep shooting for more, we just always keep asking. It's nice that you keep taking in that information, like yeah. you said. Yeah. So, thank you, Julie. Appreciate it. Thank you, it. Julie. That was a lot of work, Julie. <laughs> So that brings me to Ass Assistant Superintendent Murray's report. Uh, I will keep my report very brief, but I do want to bullet where to find information that has been shared in our recent curriculum advisory council that was held tonight at Fort Cam in person in S106. Um, I encourage you to review the slides, screencaster materials presented. Um, we had a number of agenda items, including uh, the adoption of our curricular resources for content area literacy in grades K through two for science and social studies, as well as um, a conversation about the professional development evaluation committee uh, voting to adopt the possibilities guidance um, that has been uh, provided by the state. Um, that this will continue to uh, mean that we will adhere to our evaluation plan um, as outlined, um, my, the report that will be filed will have links to pertinent documents for your review. I also include a brief uh, summary of some of the classroom observation activities that students engaged in honoring um, the commemoration of Juneteenth recently. And um, I just ask for your uh, review of these matters and if anybody has any further, I know we had a long uh, superintendent's report today so I want to keep my time brief, but we are still working and reflecting um, and Julie also shared at today's Curriculum Advisory Council that, uh, more in depth about the curricular resource adoption that I shared at last, last meeting. So just to be very brief and there's a supplemental documentation that will be uploaded into the drive for your reference, but I'm happy to have a conversation with anybody who wishes to ask more or I can host another Curriculum Advisory Council um, at your convenience. Thank you. Thank was, you. There was a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of information shared there and a, real, a lot of work, hard work that I, I would love to bring forward more sure. so people, I mean, I recommend everybody read the, um, go to the slides and at and least there, look at there will be screencasts of the portion. So the agenda did, did have some time to, you know, engage in protocols and look. I'd also like to, I'll hand out um, one thing that was reviewed um, at the meeting, um, was the current draft of the state, the K-5 elementary report card revision. And so I will put that on um, for your reference as well for you to review. Um, that's it, thank you. Thank we'll you. We'll give a little bit of a recap on Thursday in the, the year-end summary presentation at six. Oh, great. Okay, that's right, you said that. So I'm going to move on to a 
approval of meeting minutes from the regular meeting on June 8th, 2021. Do I have a motion? I make a, mo a motion to approve the minutes from June 8th, 2021. I'll second it. All right, I think that was seconded by, by Tom. He beat Marianne by hair. Um, so what I'll ask if anyone ha doesn't have any questions or comments that Melissa, if you could do a roll call vote for approval of the meeting minutes, please. And just so everybody knows, um, part of one of the new bills passed, when we have a member that is joining remotely, we must do a roll call vote on every item, okay? Thank you. Tia De Palma. Yes. Jennifer DeLongo. Yes. <coughs> Tom Hennessy. Yes. Tom Murtaugh. Yes. Marianne Pellegrino. Yes. Jack Stacy. Abstain. And Michelle DeLucia. Yes. Six in favor, one abstention. Motion carries. Thank you. So that brings us to approval of the consent agenda. So we have approval of invoices. So did the amount change at all from uh, Friday? Well, this is, I, I took no. this from. No, okay. No. I don't believe it to. Um, $823,463.29 for invoices 2020-2021 and approval of purchase orders over 7000 do you have a motion? Second. Jack. Oh, me, Coke. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, at, at this time, does anyone have any questions or comments? Then um, I will ask Melissa for a roll call vote, please. Tia De Palma? Yes. Jennifer DeLongo? Yes. Tom Hennessy? Yes. Tom Murtaugh? Yes. Marianne Pellegrino? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. And Michelle DeLucia? Yes. Seven in favor, motion carries. <clears throat> Is that you, Bob? I think it. It was oh. online. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. All right. <laughs> A little too there. So that brings us to our audience of citizens portion of this evening. Do we have anyone here who would like to speak this evening? Just you? Yeah. Hi. Hi, everybody. I was the first parent to speak to most of you in August of 2020. And I remember August of 2020, Lorena. I came and I advocated, oh, my name, um, Lorena Venegas, uh, 73 George Street. So um, I was the first parent in August of 2020 to come in and say, I wanted my kids to be in person. And I was the only one sitting out here in the audience that said that, that I wanted my kids to be in school because they needed it. They needed the socialization, they needed their teachers. Uh, they needed to be with their peers and teachers. Um, as the year progressed and as the uh, virus statistics changed, um, I changed. <laughs> and my children went remote for a, few, for a few months. And then at the end of the year, they did finish with the um, in-person. So I'm here to thank all of you for your resilience, for pushing through, and for um, putting up with me as a vested parent that's totally um, I'm totally motivated by my own children to make sure that education is good for them as it is for anybody else in our community. And I've heard awesome things about parents this year with 504s and IEPs and children who have been receiving special ed services, children who have been at Overbrook School, who have been enhanced with social emotional learning at the school. And I've, I've heard good things. So even though you see me sometimes printing the negative, I'm here in person because I want to be in the room where it happens. And I want to appreciate each one of you. Because this year, I contacted each of you. 
an email or a phone call or in person. I talk to every one of you, including Rob. <laughs> I left messages for Lynn. I've, I've touched base with Julie. And um, it's very important, the job that you have here. You have a job that you got voted in to represent us. And us is right now all over the place. As a parent, you know, just coming in here tonight, you had to drive through traffic, figure out dinner, and this, that, and the other thing. So I understand parents are not going to be present. And sometimes we can't expect them to be present, so we have to go to them. So I'm thinking for 2021, 20, for 2021, 2022, we have to make, build more incentives so that parents, we go to the parents. So I always tell Julie, you attract parents with food and sports. Ch free childcare. <laughs> That's the only way to get the parents in the building, is if you take care of the kids for them for a little bit in one room, and then they can be in this other room, and they'll give you whatever, they, whatever you need from them. Um, I did just want to touch base on some things from this year that I wanted to not happen again. And these are constructive things. Um, I wanted more music instruction. I didn't get it this year, understandably. So I do understand the connection between music and math, and I want to see how we can go around that in the future. I would like the Atlas tool for curriculum and instruction to be out <laughs> so, that an, uh, so that a parent at any given month will know the subject that their child is studying in the classroom. So they'll say, <laughs> oh, volcanoes for April, you know, amphibians for February, let's go. So that will enhance a relationship and the involvement of a parent in the classroom and try to link into their teacher. Um, in terms of um, money transfers, I want to see how we could do that more clearly to parents because the debacle with the uh, roofing bid cannot happen again. And um, I am a little bit wary about any kind of non-teaching positions that are being paid by grants. And I know that this year, because we are in flux, uh, we do have to uh, figure out how to pay for those positions in the future. Um, as, a, as a body, you are, your job is to do policy and to build a budget. That's your main responsibility. And I am encouraged with the social media policy, and I think it should get a little bit stronger on the conflicts of interest um, and the code of ethics. I think if we make those stronger, it will actually attract parents in here if we do that. Um, and I, I know that we have, um, that you have made decisions that have made investments in our infrastructure to make remote learning happen. And I believe that we cannot put those aside, that we need to use those for other things. Even if maybe you put them aside for a little bit, but maybe build them into an after school program. If you can't, if they, if they don't want academics, maybe mentoring. I think mentoring would go so well. And we have so many awesome residents that are so talented in so many different ways, whether it's sports, business, there's people out here that are are incredible. So um, I did participate in a lot of focus groups and a lot of Zoom meetings, so I want to validate the, um, the conclusion that Zoom is a plus for parents in order to link in. So between the dinner, if I have to be on video off and I'm cooking pasta, I could do it. And, <laughs> and I, could, I could do that, so it works. Uh, and I do want to recognize the um, efforts this year for more communication, especially the newsletter that was uh, language, language sensitive. I think that that's, that was great. And um, the person who I spoke to the most this year in this room is Superintendent Forty. And every time I called, she did call back. Every time I emailed, she did email me back. And I think that's, that's a very important. And I'm here to make sure that parents feel comfortable doing the same, that they have to reach out. And they have to be in the room, and they have to be present. And that we all want you know, our kids to be a success. Um, with that, my children are going to JMMS next year. And the school from the outside looks the same as when I went there. <laughs> I think the seats are the same. And um, that was a very long time ago. So um, I just plan to continue in, in advocating for my child and any, anything else I feel like it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak this evening? I think maybe um, starting next month, what we might want to do is, like we did in the beginning, allow those parents the option to participate in audience of citizens through a remote outlet. Um, but we just have to be a little bit more structured in doing so. Okay. Okay. 
by phone when we had them dialing in? Dial in, Zoom, whatever is easier. Just phone might be actually easier, easier. And this way we could just put it on speaker. Yeah. Okay. Because it's not as if they show their picture anyways. So, I mean, phone might actually work. I don't know. I'll talk to tech and we'll yeah. figure it out. Okay. Okay. Um, just, it might help with, uh, I don't know, participation. You might have to. Maybe. Well, yeah, I mean, are st still the same um, parameters. Parameters of 30 Protocols. minutes in total and depending. It's not 30. No, 30, oh. but depending, that's like the max that we have. And then depending on how many speakers, you would then divide that by the 30. I mean, if there's less than 10, then you don't have to do that. But if, like, say if there was 20 people and we only have 30 minutes dedicated to audience of citizens, that time would have to be adjusted to fit within that 30 minutes. That's what it says in the policy. Okay, but the most would be like three minutes per speaker, is it? Is it as, lo as long as there's not so many speakers that it would go over 30 minutes, do you get what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. Okay, good. All right. All right, that's all. All right, so that brings us to new business. We have 7.1, discussion and possible action on the Tuttle Playground. Erica, you want to give us a little background yes. on this? So we talked about this at the last meeting in the Finance Subcommittee and mentioned that it would be on this uh, week's agenda. This is um, an agenda item that will allow us to make the necessary transfers um, to support the purchase of the Tuttle Playground um, that was presented to the board at the last meeting. The total on that project is $109,000. Okay. In what test, position does that put us in, RJ? This week. I'm good. sorry? We're good? Yep. No, I was just asking him budget-wise. Yep. What's our oh, position? Yeah. Yeah, the, yep. the, the transfers made were they're in the back of your packet. But yeah, okay. we're, in a, we're in a good position with the, with the transfer. Well, I know they could be made. I'm just wondering. No, yeah, they wouldn't be made impact? if they put okay. us in a bad spot. All right. Do, do we have to approve the transfer? No. Do you have a motion? All right, I make a motion to approve the Tuttle Playground. We have moved along. Second. All right. So um, any questions or comments? All right, so if not, Melissa, I'm going to ask for a roll call vote on the approval of funds for the Tuttle Playground in the amount of 109. Yep. It's not listed. Is it even? Yeah, I have a question. So. Doing this Tuttle Playground, does that put us now with all of the various schools being yeah, basically set with their playgrounds? This would be the last Correct. major playground. Okay, yeah. thank you. So, are we voting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. unless the guy, did, we, I'll do roll call now. Okay, I'm sorry. Tia De Palma? Yes. Yeah. Jennifer DeLongo? Jen? Yes. Tom Hennessy? Yes. Tom Murtaugh? Yes. Marianne Pellegrino? Yes. <laughs> Jack Stacy? Yes. yes. <clears throat> and Michelle DeLucia? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, that's great. So that brings us to 7.2, discussion and possible action on the approval of the new assistant teacher contract. Can I make a motion? Any, um, do you want me to do a summary before you make a motion? Sure. We discussed, didn't we discuss this? And mm. We didn't discuss this in personnel subcommittee, no. It wasn't. But it wasn't this on is it was um, not on a replacement for... I think it's a, a replacement. I'm looking for it. Hang oh, on. yeah, it's a replacement okay. for um, an assistant teacher at Overbrook. Overbrook. It's a standard contract, same contract. Yes. Replacement. Went just a replacement. Week, just different person, different salaries. Okay. So. Okay. So, you want a motion? Yeah. Okay. So I make a motion to approve the new assistant teacher contract. Second. Any questions or comments? No? Melissa, roll call, please. 
Tia De Palma? Yes. Jennifer DeLungo? Yes. <coughs> yes. Tom Hennessy? Yes. Tom Murtaugh? Yes. Mary Ann Pellegrino? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. And Michelle DeLucia? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Discussion and possible action on the 2021-2022 substitute pay as discussed in subcommittee. Yeah. So I think everyone was here for that. If we want to, to stay competitive, we need to um, keep our, rate, our rates competitive um, as we were this year. And in, as Jen told us, it, we were very successful in being able to retain some substitutes. Yes. During a difficult time. So I will ask if there's a motion. A motion to um, take action on the 2021-2022 um, substitute pay as uh, discussed in subcommittee. <coughs> Second. Any questions or comments? All right, so Melissa, roll call vote, please. Tia De Palma? Yes. Jennifer DeLongo? Yes. Tom Hennessy? Yes. Tom Murta? Yes. Marianne Pellegrino? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. And Michelle DeLucia? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, that brings us to 7.4, discussion and possible action on the Second Steps Curricular Resource. So the Second Steps Curricular Resource is the program that we will be using for social emotional learning, um, K through eight. Did I get that right? Correct. Correct. Um, as we sort of discussed in our presentation at the last board meeting around social emotional learning, as we've been talking about uh, through the implementation of that project aware component, as you saw indicated in one of the state's priorities for the SR2 and the rescue fund funding, as well as the back return to in-person and continuity of educational services plan. Thank you. So I'll make a motion that we take action on the Second Steps Curricular Resource. Second it. All right, any questions or comments? All right, so uh, Melissa, roll call vote to approve the Second Steps Curricular Resource. Tia De Palma? Yes. Jennifer DeLongo? Yes. Tom Hennessy? No. Tom Murtaugh? Yes. Mary Ann Pellegrino? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. And Michelle DeLucia? Yes. Six in favor, one opposed, motion carries. All right, that brings us to 7.6, discussion and possible action on the assistant superintendent contract. Oh, did I skip one? Yeah. I, I don't have my glasses tonight, guys. I can't really see that well, I'm sorry. 7.6. Five, district. discussion and possible action on the district insurance renewal. As discussed, yeah. Yep, as discussed That's in discussed. subcommittee. Correct. So why don't you just go over the recommendation again? Yeah, so it's the recommendation to leave our insurance policy the way it is with a, um, the liability at $25,000 with a renewal rate of $30,995. Okay. I make a motion that we take action and accept the district Insurance renewal. I'll second it. <coughs> so, anybody have any questions or comments? So, on this time, Melissa, I'll ask for a roll call vote. Tia De Palma? Yes. Jennifer DeLongo? Yes. Tom Hennessy? Yes. Tom Murtaugh? Yes. Marianne Pellegrino? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. And Michelle DeLucia? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. All right, so now 7.6 <laughs> discussion and possible action on assistant superintendent contract um, as uh, revised in subcommittee to read as um, base salary of 
158,000 with a 19% cost share and 23 vacation days. I make a motion to accept the action of the uh, action of the assistant superintendent contract. I second. Questions, comments? All right, then Melissa will ask for a roll call vote. Tia De Palma? Yes. Jennifer DeLongo? Yes. Tom Hennessy? No. Tom Murtaugh? Yes. Marianne Pellegrino? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. And Michelle DeLucia? Yes. Six in favor, one opposed. Motion carries. 7.7, discussion of possible action on the approval of hires, rehires, and stipends. And I believe Jen passed out a more recent um, list. Yes, I did. Okay. I know this time of year it's probably changing. Yes. Yes, we had a couple of new teachers to add, and I wanted to make sure we got them on for tonight just because I can get them locked in on a contract. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. All right. Does anyone have any um, clarifying questions? If not, I'm going to ask for a motion. Uh, Michelle, would, uh, yes. would, you re would you read the new additions? We don't have it. I could read you the positions. And then I just need to look at the old one to see. Were they uploaded at all? Can they see them? No, but I can, I can take a picture of what they did. Um, I think I can do it by memory if you would like. Which ones are new? Yeah. Because I can't. Oh, I, can, I have a list of the old if you want to compare. Yeah, well, that's what fast. I was going to. I'm sorry. Um, you want me to scan it over? I believe I have it. Them? Just give me I one minute. Screenshot. Here it is. Quite different. So, uh, the two teacher social studies, one at the high school and one at the middle school, uh, Bryson Wilson and Clara O'Shaughnessy. Uh, the fifth grade teacher position, Caitlin Stokes at Mamaguan. Um, there are two para positions, uh, Elizabeth Peasley, who um, recently retired, is now going to take on a paraprofessional position. Um, at the academy, and Kelly Nizalak, who is currently a building sub, is now switching to a para ABA position as well. Um, we also have um, new resignations. Uh, the grade one teacher at Mamagwan, Kelsey uh, Iwanicki, and the um, data integration specialist, Megan Gaudioso. Um, I believe the social worker was new to Louisa Rivera. Uh, yeah, and so the, the new ones go after after Julie on the bottom, the resignations. Mar so. Maria, just so you know, all the new hires are replacements <coughs> except for one position. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Do I have an inquiry. Explain why the on the second page the ESY paras. What's, why is someone getting 1591 and then all the way up to 1666? What designates the difference? Uh, it's um, in the contract. It's a category level. So it depends on category one for paraprofessionals is an associate's or parapro um, degree. The category two level is a bachelor's or master's degree. Category three is a teaching certified uh, paraprofessional. Okay, and then if they have an ABA position, they have an additional dollar to their standard hourly rate as well. They're all at different rates. Yeah, and then it also goes by years of service now as well with the contract. So okay. it all depends on how long they've been with us too. So they have different levels within those categories. Okay. Are these summer, summer jobs or these are this is Yes, this is our ESY special education program for the summer school. Okay. So it's just a temporary five week, five weeks? We didn't have that. We didn't have that originally, correct? I'm sorry? We did not have that originally. The stipends? That should have been in the original, yes. Except the two additional, the two additional team leader stipends were, were newly added. Yeah. For okay. today. I'm sorry. Okay. We're good. Any other questions? 
I make a motion that we approve the hires, rehires, and stipends. So I'll second it. And, and resignations. And resignations. Okay. So, Melissa, <coughs> roll call vote. To approve the hires, rehires, and resignations. Tia De Palma? Yes. Jennifer DeLongo? Yes. Tom Hennessy? No. Tom Murtaugh? Yes. Marianne Pellegrino? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. And Michelle DeLucia? Yes. Six in favor, one opposed. Motion passes. All right, so that brings us to discussion and possible action on approval of the various food service purchases as discussed in subcommittee. But RJ, do you want to just give a little list of what yep. we're going to be doing? So as discussed in our subcommittee, this will be the purchase of a food truck, pizza ovens, um, walk-in coolers, HVAC work done at some schools to improve the refrigeration, all done through the food service account. And what we're asking for is to follow the bidding and recommendation of Sodexo, who is a national firm uh, who handles this and does their own vetting process before presenting um, products to us for purchase. So for time's sake and for cost savings without going out to bid, we're taking the recommendation of Sodexo um, to make those purchases. I think we might have, do we have to vote to waive the bid, bid policy? On the Sodexo purchases, I thought RJ said in subcommittee that they're they're all be paid required. through for the food okay, service. so they're paid through I Sodexo. They're yeah. paid okay. no, they're paid through our food service fund. They're not paid through the general operating account. It's just a notification for you that we are not going out to bid for ourselves. Okay, we're taking the recommendation of Sodexo, who does their own vetting process before recommending the purchase to us. And that's what I asked. And we could do that. Can we? That's what I asked. I, I think I asked it? that. Can we do that without waiving that the bid policy? That was my question. I mean, if you're more comfortable with yeah, the more, policy, yeah, you whatever. can certainly do that. I, I rather just yeah. address it and sure. say it in the agenda item. Does anyone have uh, to know the number? What number? The, the bid policy number. So we could add to the agenda item. Of the waiving? Yeah. I'll look it up. Three three two zero. That's the one you redid, RJ. Yeah. Three three two zero. Three three two zero. All right. So the the motion would read to first you have to waive the policy and then you make make the motion. Well, I think we're I doing believe one item, can't we? I, I yeah. don't believe you can. I think no. you have to waive. I believe you have to waive the the policy <coughs> first. Tom, what do you think? Well, I, but what I are know, you waving I know in the last time we waived the policy, you did it together. Yeah, but what because otherwise, yeah. what are you waving it in relation to? Yeah. You're just yeah. waving it. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, you, okay, you do want it to together. give it some. I, I stand corrected. Some, Absolutely. Some substance. All right. So um, the motion would be to waive policy 3320 and to approve the various food service purchases through Sodexo. I make that motion. <laughs> I second. All right. Any questions or comments? <laughs> All right. So if not, Melissa, roll call vote, please. Tia De Palma? Yes. Jennifer DeLongo? No. Tom Hennessy? Yes. Tom Murtaugh? Yes. Marian Pellegrino? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. Sorry. <clears throat> and Michelle DeLucia. Yes. Six in favor, one opposed. Motion carries. That brings us to 7.9, 7 discussion and possible action on the approval of vendor for wall pad bit. And I believe, RJ, was there only one? There was only one for this. And I can note from for 7.9 to 7.14, it's all pending available funding. It's just the bid will last for a um, I believe a year, 
So whenever funding is made available, we can act on these items. Okay. The wall pads are for the multi multi-purpose rooms at Overbrook, uh, Mamaguin, and Tuttle in the gymnasium for uh, safety purposes uh, while kids are in those spaces um, engaging in PE activities. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do I have a motion? I have a question. Do we have to do these one at a time? Yes? Yes. Okay. Here we go. I um, make a motion to approve uh, for the, the vendor for the wall pad wall pads bid. Second. I'll second. Give it to her. <laughs> Any questions or comments? All right, if not, Melissa, back to you. Tia De Palma? Yes. Jennifer DeLongo? Yes. Tom Hennessy? Yes. Tom Murtaugh? Yes. Marianne Pellegrino? Yes. <coughs> Jack Stacy? Yes. And Michelle DeLucia? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Brings us to discussion and possible action on the approval of the vendor for refrigeration upgrades for the East Haven High School bid. I could, I'd like to note that this is being paid out of food service. Yeah, that, well. I was wondering if this was something. Yep. Different on the recommendation letter, it states it's coming from the school launch pro program. Okay, all right, so then, all right, one so, I make so it wasn't in, like just to ask, it wasn't included in the Sodexo no pricing. Okay, so no. it is a separate, all right. We put this out to bid M Core Services New England yes. Mechanical was yeah. the sole bidder. Correct. Yeah, so I make a motion to approve the vendor for refrigeration. I second it. Thank you, Tom. Um, at this time, any questions or comments? Melissa. Tia De Palma. Yes. Jennifer DeLongo. Yes. Tom Hennessy. Yes. Tom Murtaugh. Yes. Marianne Pellegrino. Yes. Jack Stacy. Yes. And Michelle DeLucia. Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Brings us to um, discussion and possible action on the approval of vendor for East Haven High School wrestling mats. And again, one bid? One bidder. Um, Mr. Verderam had indicated that the mats that he was seeking, there was only one local vendor for them, so we are comfortable with this vendor. The interlocking. Right? Interlocking, correct. I make a motion to approve this vendor for the wrestling mat bid. Bid. Second. I'll second. Okay, any questions or comments? All right, Melissa, if you could do a roll call vote, please. Tia De Palma? Yes. <laughs> Jennifer DeLongo? Yes. Tom Hennessy? Yes. Tom Murtaugh? Yes. Marianne Pellegrino? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. And Michelle DeLucia? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. All right, so discussion of possible action on the approval of the vendor for the East Haven High School Krasafi Field Bleachers bid. So we are recommending Bleachers International um, for the elevated bleachers at Krasafi Field in the amount of $36,124. As stated in the subcommittee, I am in discussion with the town to try to use some cap project money of, of, um, that's available to us. So if that is the case, this will be paid for by CAP projects. If not, we would like to approve this bid no matter what, because it'll be used for the town if that is possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any question, questions? Senator? Otherwise, I'm going to ask for a motion. Make a motion to approve the vendor for the East Haven High School Krasafi Field Bleachers bid. I second it. All right. We got a second by Tom. Anyone have any questions or comments? If not, I'm going to ask Melissa to do a roll call vote, please. Tia De Palma? Yes. Jennifer DeLongo? Yes. Tom Hennessy? Um, which one are we on? Bleachers. Bleachers. Yes. Tom Murtaugh? Yes. Marianne Pellegrino? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. And Michelle DeLucia? 
Yes. Motion passes unanimously. So that brings us to discussion and possible action on approval of the vendor for the library media center workspace bid. I believe we're gonna break this into two different agenda items um, or just say it all in one line. Say it all in one. Okay. So we have approval of who's doing the framework? Kelly? So the recommendation is for, no, the, the base bid, which includes framing all of the glass and doors will be John Simpson for the $115,000. And the alternate one bid, which would be for the office space built, built, built out would go to Kelly property for $28,450. Okay. All right. So the motion would to be, be to approve Kelly property management for the, what is it? 28,400, right, 28,000. Oh my God, that's, all right, there's too many numbers listed there. There's too many numbers listed there, that can't be right. $28,450. So, yeah, there's, yeah, there's right. an extra zero. And John like, L. Simpson right. Company for the um, $115,000, correct? Correct. Okay. okay, I make that motion. <laughs> I'll second. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not even trying to repeat it. <laughs> Poor thing. Any questions or comments? If that Melissa, roll call vote, please. Tia De Palma? Yes. Jennifer DeLongo? Yes. Tom Hennessy? No. Tom Murta? Yes. Marianne Pellegrino? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. And Michelle DeLucia? Yes. Six in favor, one opposed, motion carries. Okay, discussion and possible action on the approval of vendor for East Haven High School athletic field fence bid. So this is a approving a fence going from the track to the baseball dugout, it's, uh, including a locked gate between the two dugouts and another fence going from softball dugout to the perimeter fence. Um, we are also adding the bullpen options for both teams. Um, this will increase our safety and security of our campus. Okay. I make a motion to approve the vendor for the East Haven High School athletic field fence bit. And what's the name of the vendor? Total fence. Total fence. Total, fence. Total fence. I'll second that. Any questions or comments? Melissa, can you do a roll call to approve total fence um, for the East Haven High School athletic field fence bid? Tia De Palma? Yes. Jennifer DeLongo? Yes. Tom Hennessy? Yes. Tom Murta? Yes. Marianne Pellegrino? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. And Michelle DeLucia? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. All right, that brings us to the end of our meeting. Tom, how'd I do on time? Ooh, two minutes. Unbelievable. Over. Future agenda items? Future agenda items. Thursday night, I think, should have public comment. Yeah. Um, we haven't had public comment for that particular meeting in I don't even know how long. I think it's important. The agenda has gone out. Um, it is, I think we should probably make public the end of the year review to um, maybe record and air, right, the 6 o'clock meeting. Yeah, it'll be recorded. Okay. Yep. Just want to make sure. Um, other than that, uh, the seven o'clock meeting will be an executive session. Um, therefore, I don't believe there will be any type of link or anything like that or public access. I'm um, just going through. There's a whole bunch of new stipulations that I mean, we're okay here, but as of July 1st, there are some certain things that we need to do for policy. Um, for, well, policy re relating to how we run our meetings. Okay. with virtual uh, options. I, I would like to do some policy subcommittees if possible because we may need to extend some of those COVID policies into next year mm -hmm. based on revised guidance. I know they end June 30th because they were temporary. So we may want to revisit that as well as any policies related to any of that legislation that you handed out this evening. Yeah, like it says April, it's April 2022 for, 
for a few of the things is what they're right. sending to. So um, I think we should do a policy and then just I'll have some Board of Ed agenda items relative to some MOUs coming up. Good. So would that be um, MOUs would go under? Personnel. Personnel. Personnel subcommittee. Yeah. So yep. we should have personnel subcommittee and a policy subcommittee. Yep. Sub along with finance. Subcommittee will be in executive session because yeah. MOU will have MOUs. to be MOUs. discussed in there. Yeah. In exactly. Okay. So our next regular meeting is July 13th. Oh, how I'm going to miss you guys. July. <laughs> uh, where uh, you won't be here? <laughs> no. It's, oh, after Thursday, I'm saying it'll be like two weeks. Oh. I was just getting <laughs> just joking. Wondering. And then we might have to start calling some weekly meetings if we have a lot of hires. We want to process that paperwork, lock in our hires. Mm. Waiting two weeks is just too long, as well as paying invoices because you know we do a lot of ordering around this time of year as well. So we might have to throw in weekly meetings between our regular meetings. And th that is, I mean, one of the indications, and we could do virtual meetings for special meetings. But we do, um, there are certain requirements on when those agendas need to be posted very specifically for any type of virtual meeting, special meeting, regular meeting. Um, they must be, um, any, any meeting held by electronic equipment must be posted at least 24 hours before the meeting. Um, which we do. Which we do anyways. Uh, but also, yeah. it must also be posted on the website, not just in the building or to town hall, we have to, there's just, there's actually several. When does that go into effect? That goes into July effect 1? July 1st, 2021. What page are you on? I just want to make sure. I, I am that. on, there's no page numbers on mine, so I can't tell you, but it's uh, June 10th or June 17th one. The 17th? I am on June 10th? 17th, so it's the second, second and third and fourth page. Okay. It's that long? Second and third and fourth page. Okay. It's that long? Yep. Oh, it's really long. Oh my God. Yeah, because there's um, information on what equipment, notice and agenda, special meetings, conducting the meeting, how okay. members can join, on if a member gets disconnected. There's all the things, all the questions that we've had for the past year that we've had these type of meetings are, are being addressed in this. So just that's just a little update. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Well, Second, the meeting adjourned.